Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to be finishing verse 3 this lesson, but before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we saw last lesson, he says here that I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience. And we saw that last lesson that it's our conscience. Uh, our conscience is given to us by God to guide us in what's right or wrong. And yet our conscience should be, uh, should be in a line with the word of God. What the, what the standards of the word of God and not the standards of this world system. So it's important for us to meditate upon the word of God, read the word of God. It's important for a Christian to, to dive into the word of God and to know the word of God. Why? So that your conscience can have the right standards of what should be right and wrong in God's eyes. And if you're not in, the, you may be a Christian, but if you're not in the word of God, then you don't really know what God considers right and wrong. You could be, you could be a little foggy on whether this thing is right or wrong or not. And it's very important for Christians to get into the word of God, to study the word of God, to meditate upon it, to read the word of God so that your conscience can be can be can have have God's word as its standard for right and wrong and it can know in in all situations of of life this is right or this is wrong now we now we get into uh this lesson here he says that without ceasing i have remembrance of you in my prayers night and day and you know don't be familiar with someone's continued prayers for you. And don't think that your continual praying for someone, even for many years, is all about you. Don't get the idea, well, I've been praying for, you know, John for the last three and a half years, you know. Don't get the idea that it's all about you. In your effort, Paul thanked who? Paul thanked God that he remembered to pray for Timothy day and night, day and night. It was God who brought Timothy to Paul's mind. Night and day means that Paul learned to pray at all times. He told the Thess Thessalonians to pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. You know, learn to pray. Learn to pray throughout the day. When you get into the car, whether you're going to work or whether you're going to church or to the store, learn to pray. When you answer the phone, when you open a letter or you open an email, learn to pray. When you go for a walk or you, when you go out to work in the garden or in the yard, learn to pray beforehand. Include God in all aspects of your life. Include God. It doesn't have to be long, drawn out, you know, 45 minute prayers when you're going to go out and, you know, work in the garden. Um, but just pray, God bless this time in the garden. You may say it sounds funny, but, you know, if you honor God, God will honor you. And and things can happen. Things can happen when you get in that car and well, I'm just going to, I'm just going up to the corner. I'm going to, I'm going to buy a loaf of bread and, and some, uh, some things for coffee and that's it. And I'll be right back. I mean, what's God interested in that about? Well, God is interested, but the thing is, is that you don't think God is interested in it. And God is very interested in your life. And uh, 
So include God when you are going on the uh, online, on the internet, or when you're uh, going to do something, include God, pray. And, and, and after a while, it, it'll become a habit and you'll become more dependent upon God and you'll trust God. And because things can happen, car accidents can happen, things can happen in this world. And, and just include God in your life. Don't condemn yourself if you don't have a desire to pray for someone anymore who you've been praying for for the last few years. Well, Pastor Mark, I got something to say. I'm feeling guilty now because I've been praying someone now for 17 and a half years and I just don't have the desire to pray for them anymore, right? And, and, and I feel like I need to continue, but I just don't have that desire anymore. Well, don't condemn yourself if, if that desire to pray for that person uh, isn't there anymore, right? Don't turn prayer into a ritual. Let God guide you in your prayers. Maybe God has someone else praying for them now, and he wants you to pray for another person. And when you pray for people, don't just pray list prayers. All right? <laughs> I, I've heard it... I won't say too many details, but I heard it, hear it on the radio once in a while where this, you know, these, these people, they pray and they pray these list prayers. God bless Sam, bless, bless Sam, bless Ann, bless Tim and John and Jake and, and Betty and Sue and, and William and, 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 you know, and they go through a list of whatever, 45 names or 112 names. And, and then they're done, bless them, amen, you know. And it's like, boy, I just prayed for 100 and, 123 men or 123 people, right? And it's like, no, all you did was you just told God how many people you knew, but you didn't pray for them. You may say, yeah, but I, I wanted God to bless them. That's a prayer. Look, it's list prayers are... are there's no benefit in list prayers, all right? Uh, if you're going to pray for people, then pray for them. Pray for them. Talk to God about them. Again, don't just don't just you know mention 16 people in a prayer and, and and list them and then say God bless them all. Thank you, God. Amen. Right? No. When you pray, you pray for them. You may say, well, you know, that's going to take too much time. Well, but that's what prayer is. Prayer is talking to God about someone, not just mentioning their name. Uh, it's praying for someone to God. What do you want God to do for them? What is it that you want God to do for that person? Now, when we pray, again, it's not just mentioning someone's name on a list, but it's praying for that person and, and it's taking time. You know, it's like the person who goes, uh, they're at work and they, they have a 15 minute break and they come back from the 15 minute break and somebody asks them, whoa, what did you do for your 15 minutes? Oh, I just prayed for 100 and, 127 people. Really? How can you pray for 127 people on a 15-minute break? <laughs> right? All they did was list the names. That's not, it's not, it's not what God wants. When you pray for someone, pray for them. Tell God what you want to do, right? The blind man came to Jesus and 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 Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? Well, I'm so and so. I mean, isn't it obvious what, what you want? What I, I'm blind. Of course, isn't it obvious that I want, to, I want to see? Well, no. Tell me what you want and, and I'll do it. You know, Jesus like, tell me what you want. What do you want me to do for you? 
And we think to ourselves, well, God knows my heart. You know, I don't really have to say it. Well, yes, you do. Yes, you do need to say it. God wants to, He, even though he knows your thoughts afar off, and even though he knows what you want, he still wants you to say it. He wants you to tell him what, what you want him to do. And just listing someone's name, bless him, bless her, bless them, you know, bless that, bless this. It's not really praying for them. <clears throat> you, what do you want God to do for your Sunday school? Don't just say, God bless Sunday school today, right? What do you want him to do? What do you want him to do at your Bible study? What do you want him to do at, at your Aunt Margaret's life, right? What is it that you want? Well, isn't it obvious, God? Aunt Margaret, she's got cancer, and, and she's she may die, and she's going in for, for chemotherapy. Isn't it obvious? Look, what do you, well, it was obvious for the blind man what he wanted, but Jesus still said, what do you want me to do? And, and God is saying, what do you want me to do in, about this person or about this thing you're praying for? You have to say it and 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 mention be be specific don't just mention somebody's name i don't want you to just mention my name in a prayer i want you to just tell god what you want him to do for me and the same thing is you wouldn't want me to just mention your name in a prayer god you know you would want me to tell god god bless them give them a wonderful day today father just protect them on the road protect them at work or whatever they're doing today god really uh just just heal them if they're feeling right i'm praying for you i'm not just mentioning your name so he says that without ceasing i have mention of you in my prayers day night and day right and the thing is is thank god thank god that that you are reminded to pray for someone and and that that he brings to to, to your memory their 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 need for prayer Thank God for that. And, and, and also, when we pray, pray for them. Don't just mention their name. Pray for them. And then he says here in verse 4, Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of, you, of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. And he says here, I have mention of you in my prayers night and day, and I'm greatly desiring to see you. Greatly desiring here. The Greek word is, is epi, epipotheo. Epipotheo. And it means a, a, to long for something very greatly. The prefix epi strengthens and intensifies this word. So he's saying, I'm greatly, I'm amazingly greatly desiring to see you it's not like you know hey timothy why don't you come on over here in prison see me here you know i'd like to see you no paul's like i'm greatly desiring i really want to see you now there's two reasons why paul wants to see timothy he says here greatly desiring to see thee uh, being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. The first reason that Paul wanted to see Timothy was because he remembers the tears that Timothy shed when he left him at Ephesus in Acts chapter 20 and verse 37. He says, I greatly desire to see you because I remember the tears that you shed when I left you at Ephesus, left you and, and the others at Ephesus. And the second reason is because Paul doesn't have much time left before his death, and he wants to see Timothy one last time as a father to a son, as a fellow laborer to a fellow laborer. And Paul... Paul was getting ready to die, being put to death. And Paul wanted to see Timothy. He wanted to be, we know Luke was with him. We know that. Luke was the only one left with him now. But he wanted to see Timothy because of the years that he spent ministering to Timothy 
and, and pouring out his life into Timothy and watching Timothy grow as his son in the faith, but also as a fellow laborer for the gospel. And Paul wanted Timothy as one, he, as, because Timothy was one in heart with Paul. And he want, on his last days, he wanted someone there that, that he knew was close to God. He wanted someone there that, that he knew, uh, knew Paul and knew, knew God in his heart and would be one with him in the faith. So he says, I greatly desire to see thee because I remember the tears that you shed. And also because, because you're, you're, I don't have much time left and I want to be with, 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 with a man of faith. I, Luke was, yes, but I want to be with, with one who's one with my heart, one who, who knows what I went through, one who was with me in the dark times, one who was with me in the good times, when people got saved, when we, when we traveled to different, different cities and, and we ministered the gospel and we saw people get saved. We also saw persecution. And Timothy, I know that you, Luke was with me in those times also, but you also. Uh, and he wanted Timothy there with him because Timothy knew and identified with Paul in his life. All right, until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.